This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos, and we're going to talk about uh, polynomials today. And we're going to try to see what the connection is between zeros and factors, and we'll explain what that's all about. All right, well, here is a polynomial, uh, x squared minus x minus 6. And we set it equal to y because uh, we're going to graph it. We're going to see what this thing looks like. So I graphed this thing earlier, and it turns out that uh, I know exactly where it crosses the x-axis. Well, let's get the point so that you can see this. Uh, let's make it blue. So I know it crosses the x-axis at negative 2. It crosses the x-axis at 3. And it also crosses the y-axis at negative 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a little bit more. It's a little bit off my graph, but that's okay. This is just a tool. For us to use. Uh, all right, so I graphed this uh, earlier, and so it, it kind of has this. Well, if I could try to do this neatly, uh, let's see if I can do this. Uh, boy, it'll make it a little wavy here, but uh, it has this kind of th this general shape, which we all know is a parabola, and uh, it definitely has that shape. So it continues going up uh, both sides forever. These branches keep going up. And it looks like uh, our minimum is somewhere somewhere down here. This is just a rough estimate. Okay, so I'm just going to make these points really big so we can see these points. All right, now it turns out <coughs> that the uh, points where it crosses the x-axis, these two points right here, are called zeros. Okay, so they have a special name for them. It's called a zero. Okay, so this is one zero right here and then this is another zero right there okay so we know that uh, we know that this point and by the way those zeros are x intercepts because it's where it crosses the uh, the x-axis and of course this point right here uh, those that point right there is the uh, y-intercept because that's where it crosses the y-axis no special name for that besides y-intercept all right, so uh, we've got our curve. We've got some language we kind of understand. Zeros, x-intercepts. All right, um, what else do we need to talk about? Well, we need to talk about something else. turns out that if we were to take this polynomial and factor it, and please review our lesson on factoring, if you'd like, if you don't recall how to factor. But it turns out if we factor this polynomial, these are the factors. So we spend some time factoring it. And uh, we'll see that these factors kind of match up with this problem right here. Uh, as a matter of fact, we know that uh, if we were going to try to figure out, hey, where are, like, let, let's say we didn't have the graph and we want to figure out where are the x intercepts. Well, we know that these points right here, like, let's say this left point. This left point, now that we're looking at the graph, is negative 2, 0. We know the right point is 3, 0, just by looking at this graph. But if we didn't know this, the, the neat thing that is always consistent about these points, which are x-intercept, is that the y values are always 0. Uh, that's why these points are called zeros, because the y values are zeros. So that's where that term comes from, uh, the term zero, okay? Zeros are locations where the y value is zero. All right, now, if we tried to locate those points without looking at the graph, we could have done that. We could replace the y with zero. So we could algebraically locate these points by using some algebra tools. Uh, well, let's see. Hmm, you got a zero, and we're multiplying two factors that equal zero. Well, we know the property of uh, dealing with quadratics is that you're supposed to set these two factors equal to zero. It's the multiplication property of zero. And then you solve. You add three to both sides. I subtract two from both sides. All right, so we know that when y is zero, x is three, and we know that x is negative two. So you can locate these algebraically to get those same points if you don't have a graphing calculator handy. All right, another pattern that you should see 
which is also true, is the connection between factors and zero. Uh, well, we know that these right here are the factors, right? We said we had factored this polynomial, and though those are the factors, okay? So I'm going to put the word factors here. Well, there's a little pattern that uh, occurs, and it's not a very complicated one. But if you look, you'll notice that this is a negative 3, but then the graph crosses at positive 3. Notice how they're opposites of each other. Okay? Well, it happens all the time. Here you'll notice that this is a positive 2, but it crosses the y -ax I'm sorry, x-axis at negative 2 also. So they're opposites of each other. So it's kind of a neat little property, and that's the connection between zeros and factors. Okay, so the factors are opposite the zeros. And that's always going to happen no matter what polynomial you're dealing with, no matter what degree you're dealing with. This is a quadratic, a second degree, but it also works for cubics, quartics, and so on. So that property always exists. Okay, so... That's just a tiny little lesson from MathGuide.com. Uh, make sure you go back to MathGuide, check out other lessons, interactive quizzes, activities, and videos. Take care.